Hey guys, it's Max. In front of me, I have the new 16 inch MacBook Pro and today we are gonna be testing it out. We're gonna do a few benchmarks to see how well the CPU and the graphics perform and then take a look at some video editing performance and see how this thing does. Now, this one right here is actually the base model. I also have the new eight core i9 model on order with the best graphics, but Apple is only shipping those out next week, which is actually great because we're gonna be able to show you guys the difference between the base and the higher spec model how much of a performance difference there is for video editing. Today I'm gonna to focus on Final Cut and running a few of these different tests, but as you guys can expect, I always have those very detailed video editing comparisons. So in the follow-up video with the higher spec model, we will have the comparison with the older top-end model with Vega 20 and 8 core, and we're gonna look at Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, and Final Cut Pro with a variety of different codecs. So make sure you guys are subscribed so you guys don't miss out on that video. Once again, thank you guys for buying through the link in the video description that really helps out the channel and not only that but there are actually some one to two hundred dollar discounts right now and you can get the best graphics card for only a hundred dollars more instead of two hundred dollars let's go ahead and jump into the benchmark starting off with Cinebench R20 which is going to push all of the cores to their limits and uh, we're also going to take a look at thermal performance and to see what's going on with the temps and uh, how fast does this run now I'm going to be comparing this base model MacBook Pro to my MacBook Pro Pro. This one is a 2018 six core processor, also 2.6 gigahertz. Now I spent $3,550 on this MacBook Pro. This has the Vega 20 graphics, which was the best graphics you can get. And I'm really curious, how do these new graphics, the base graphics compare to this? It might get a little bit interesting. Temperature seem to be the, about the same as the previous MacBook Pro. Right now we're running at 3.3 gigahertz once the fans kicked up. With the new cooling and maybe some other tweaks, the maximum I was able to hit actually a little bit higher and the frequency is also running faster than before. And there we have it. We have a score of 2,569, whereas my six core, that gets about 2,350 to 2,400. So uh, yes, it's running faster. It can hit a higher peak. Uh, and the score is better. Now let's take this a step further into the video editing territory. I'm going straight to Blackmagic RAW speed test. As we can see, the CPU can decode at 36 frames per second, 8K, and the graphics card could decode 8K at 46 frames per second. Of course, Blackmagic RAW is really efficient. We're gonna take a look at, say, C200 Cinema RAW Lite as well. I'm obviously not shooting 8K. I'm shooting either 4K or 6K. So for 6K, using the graphics card, which is what your programs are gonna use, like DaVinci Resolve, you can actually decode 6K at up to 60 frames per second without a problem. If you're shooting with Blackmagic, Pocket Cinema Camera, even the 6K version, this last laptop, the base graphics is going to be able to play that back smoothly without dropping frames. Now let's get into video editing. I have Final Cut open right here. This is the latest version with the new metal base rendering engine, which harnesses a lot more of the graphics, just like I talked about in my previous video. And uh, the CPUs are very similar in these two laptops, but we have the best of the best graphics available before today and the base model with a huge price difference. We're gonna start out here with, uh, this is Bruce X, this is a rendering test. It's gonna use mainly graphics, some CPU, but mainly graphics. All right, we are off. I can open up iStat menu here. The graphics card is being maxed out. The memory is being maxed out. We are almost done. 20 seconds, and my MacBook Pro, 32 seconds was the Vega 20 graphics. And that 32 seconds was an improvement over 42 seconds before the latest version of Final Cut. Okay, well, that is interesting for the first test. Uh, I guess this new generation of graphics really has something going on. Now let's go ahead and test out video stabilization. I have a 20 second 4K clip right over here from the A7S II. I'm gonna go ahead and start. It does take about two seconds to actually start doing it. I hit the timer right away. And we are done seven and a half seconds to get it done. 
My MacBook Pro used to take about eight seconds with the Vega 20. With the new update, it takes five to five and a half seconds, so it's still faster. Now, I don't have the exact numbers for the previous base model that had the 555X graphics, but if I take the speed improvements with the new Final Cut, and I take the old numbers that it had before this update, I would probably estimate to be roughly 16 seconds. So with this new graphics card, this base model is about twice as fast as far as stabilization. So that is a pretty good improvement. Now stabilizing fast is great, but what matters more is your actual timeline experience. So here I have one of my 4K projects. This is a real estate shoot that I did, and I deleted all proxy files, everything pre-rendered. As you guys can see, we have the little line right there. So all of this is playing back in real time. I see no skips or jitter or anything whatsoever. Now, of course, with all of these new optimizations for software in these really powerful systems, stuff like this gets to be easy now. Even a base model, MacBook Pro 16 gigs of RAM is having no issues with this S-Log graded footage. So let's go ahead and export it here and see how long it takes. All right, so we are getting close to done here. Also interesting is that our fans literally have not spun up at all. There we go, we have it. It was a minute and 26 seconds compared to a minute and 33. <laughs> so that's great uh, in one way. It's also disappointing if you spent a lot of money on something last year or even this year, an 8-core maybe with Vega 20 graphics. Uh, or even worse, the 560X, because this base graphics card is absolutely killing it. Now let's take it a step further and do something a little bit harder. So here I have Canon 4K 60 frames per second RAW from the C200, and let's go ahead and play it back. And this is at full resolution, it's at full quality playback, no down sampling whatsoever, with color corrections and a LUT applied, and as you guys can see, it is playing back pretty dang smoothly. Now the latest version of Final Cut made some pretty great enhancements. I went from about 30 frames per second in Final Cut to close to 60 and here it looks like we're playing back at about 49 and 50. So not as good as the Vega 20 graphics for this raw with effects and being graded, but man this is a base MacBook Pro playing back 4K60 RAW at full resolution. If you have a C200, you no longer have to buy the best MacBook Pro to make it playable at 30, when I expect the better graphics card to be able to do at least 60. So let's go ahead and export this, and uh, we'll see how it compares. All right, it is done, and it looks like it took 14 minutes and 50 seconds, and my Vega 20 MacBook Pro took 14 minutes and 40 seconds. 10 seconds difference in a five minute project. Uh, 4K 60 RAW graded to H.264. Not bad. <laughs> not, not bad. Good job, Apple. Um, you spent a lot more. I know maybe some of you guys feel the same way, but this new base Mac, not bad. Uh, let's do uh, finish off this test with Red RAW. And of course, the playback isn't using graphics yet. They are gonna release Mercury playback for RAW files as soon as the Mac Pro comes out. And that is gonna help quite a bit for the timeline. Right now, you do have to put it in better performance mode if you wanna be able to edit back uh, without having drop frames. But let's run a render and see how it compares. Okay, we are almost done here. Our CPU has been pinned the whole time. Our graphics has been pinned the whole time, meaning we can definitely use uh, maybe some better graphics cards and a better CPU if you wanna speed this up. Those are our two bottlenecks. Uh, it is done right now and it looks like it took um, 10 minutes, just over 10 minutes to get done uh, compared to my MacBook Pro which takes 8 minutes and 38 seconds. So in this scenario when you're pushing the CPUs to the max, we're pushing the graphics cards to the max. The Vega 20 is slightly ahead. Maybe RAM might have something to do with that as well. So there we have it guys. What did I learn from this video and this testing? Well, the new 16 inch base MacBook Pro in some cases can actually outperform the previous top end six core Vega 20 MacBooks from 2018. Uh, and even the 2019 models with the eight core, because these graphics cards are better, they can even out outperform the eight core models with the Vega 20 in some of these tests. Now, some of the other tests did perform better with the Vega 20, uh, but overall, this is such a great bang for the buck compared to the previous ones. And I didn't upgrade from my 2018 6-core to the 8-core models because the graphics card, the Vega 20, was the main thing that was holding it back, and it held back the 8-core. Now we shouldn't have that issue. So overall, if you're somebody buying one of these, 
man, you're gonna get some great performance, especially if you're editing compressed 4K, you're gonna have no issues whatsoever. But I would say upgrade to that better graphics card with eight gigs of video memory. At b &H, it's only a $100 upgrade from the base. I'm excited to test that one out. Make sure you guys are subscribed because I do have the eight core one with the best graphics coming in. And I'll be testing that with Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve and some other tests as well. So we will see how big of a difference we have in performance. So thank you guys for watching. Huge shout out to Storyblocks. Uh, thank you guys for sponsoring the channel. You guys check them out if you need stock footage. And uh, this has been Max and I'll see you guys in the next video.